Hey guys, good morning. Good morning, taking Ghost out, the low rider ST for a little <clears throat> upgrade. Pull it out, it's getting kind of tight over here. So stay tuned. Whoops, what is that? What was that? Yeah, if you got a glimpse, stop. Stop the video and figure it out. Coming soon, something new, something really cool. Okay, before I even start, I always like to lift my bike so I have it nice and straight. And although I don't really need it, but I'm gonna take the saddlebags off. Very easy, quick. Bang, bang, and it's off. One hand operation, huh? Because the other one is holding the camera. Yeah, so from the title, you probably know what we're doing here today. I took the saddlebags off and let me just a short short explanation why i'm doing this you know there's so many so much literature so many videos so much discussion about the blow by coming from uh, this v2 and filling up the uh crankcase with uh, extra and uh pressure increasing the pressure inside the crankcase and there's not enough sufficient venting to relieve that pressure and there's so many articles so many videos discussing that why it's bad for the uh for the milwaukee 8 and why it's bad for any engine i'm not going to go into it too much but i believe that if there's uh there's smoke there must be a fire and in this case it's i believe it's actually an issue that i need to you know i need to address for the longevity of the bike i want this bike to last the engine to last for a long time actually i've seen a, lay, a last video by a blockhead where they open up they open up their his engine godzilla goldzilla you see the cylinders you see the top of the uh of the pistons completely clear and it's like a 5000 i think 5000 mile uh ride that the they had and i don't remember the exact how many miles but it was a significant amount of miles and they were almost completely clean now they they were talking about that it's that might be because of the uh non-ethanol that they've been running but i also know that a year ago one of their videos uh they actually uh, addressed the venting of the air cleaner because of uh you know all the, the excess oil pressure coming in through the vents and uh, blowing into the uh, pistons and burning up over there so that reminded me i don't know like who knows if that's the, re the reason their pistons were so clean if it's uh the uh you know the the fact that there's no oil being sucked into the into the intake or it's the non-ethanol uh, uh fuel that they've been using but that reminded me that i need to address this and i've been wanting to do this for the longest time that there's there's so many ways to to alleviate that problem there's a breather dipstick that they have there's a trans cover vent which uh a lot of uh videos are talking about that that's pretty much uh the best solution and obviously there's you know the last resort of uh tapping in and letting all the oils that that's being sucked in or blown out to the bottom of your uh, air intake what they do is uh draining from here draining the oil excess instead for it going in it goes into a catch can or goes to the ground, whatever. But I'm going to deal with it by the most recommended and uh, the part that I found from Trask. It's the, uh, they call it the Checkmate Breather. Trans cover. Trans cover. And that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. I'll show you step by step how I do it. So let's start. Okay, so the job itself is pretty an easy job. The only thing is the access to these bolts. These are Allen bolts, three, three over 16, I think. Uh, and access to them is very difficult, especially on this soft tail. So need to take both covers off and then reach these six bolts. Uh, do you see them? One over here, one over here. I'll show you as I go. Very tricky, a lot of gentle finger work, <laughs> finger work. Some of my uh, viewers were like, every time I say, I can't get it in, I finally got it in, they all go like berserk. I read comments, oh, I love it. Anyway, pretty funny, same thing over here. It's a lot of gentle, you know, getting uh, access to these bolts. So let's start by taking the covers off. Now 
I got easier access to the bolts over here in the back. Next thing you want to do is remove this because it's going to be in the way. Just unclip this, move it away. And then move the O2 sensor, disconnect the O2 sensor on the other side. A little bit of oil from the return. Just move it away so it's not in the way. 3 16th. 3 16th Allen for for this for these six. Slowly and carefully get them done. One of these bolts uh, uses uh, access is easier with a different tool. The one on the far left, back right here, I got actually with this with a ball head, and it's angled, so I was able to get it out like that. With this one, slowly, slowly, with this short Allen, check out the rest. I just rigged myself a great a great little tool I just <laughs> I cut one of my allen keys made a small short version of it and a straight version of it so it will fit over here and uh, once I break it loose it's easier to work with it like that huh genius or what <laughs> that is the third the third out of six we're halfway there let me tell you I'm working on this about 35 minutes. It's not difficult. It's just very difficult to, to get access to. Really tight. Uh, if you have an option, take your uh, back header off. I wouldn't do it. I'm not doing it. Just struggling with every time I switch between different tools. The short Allen, the long Allen, whatever. The ball head, whatever you have and uh, fits, that's what you do. It's patience does it. So like you see, it's uh, very tedious. If anybody has done this job or and uh, has a, a great idea or a tool to use, or if you just haven't done this job, but you still know what tool can work, please let us know down by the comments for the viewers. So whoever's gonna do this job will have, uh, will set up uh, the proper tools in advance. Very tight spots over there to get into. If you know, let me know. Let us all know. Thank you guys, come on. So I finally got the last bolt out. Before I take out this cover and leave everything exposed, let me show you what I got. What the, the, the new item is, that's the Trask. The Trask uh, breather. Mm, called the Checkmate breather. It comes with the hose uh, for the venting and a filter. I'll show you where we put it before. I mean, uh, before I put it, I'll show you where I'm gonna put it. Let me open it up and show you what it looks like from behind and then I'll compare. So this is what the kit includes. It's the actual cover itself made of aluminum billet and it's got already the the seal. That's the reed, one way reed. Uh, lets air out, doesn't let air in and that's a whole philosophy of uh, do you want uh, pre like equal pressure in and out, like the outside and the crankcase, the same pressure, or you wanna have somewhat of a vacuum inside, inside the crankcase, there's a debate whether which is better. Trask believes in having somewhat of a vacuum. So air, uh, excess air goes out, no air comes in. So you're creating somewhat maybe of a, of a vacuum inside there. So the cover, aluminum billet, very nice. The hose that connects to the filter. And they also gave me a little sticker where I'll put it on my bag. Let me take off this one, which also requires a little bit working around and then I'll compare it and uh, we'll install the new one.
and this is a comparison between the two. The only thing, uh, the trash comes ready to be installed except for one part. And I ask myself, why not just do it? You have to reuse this, this little hose that comes. So we're gonna take it off, expose it through here, then pull it out inward and install it. Okay, I just finger tightened uh, the bolts in and that was really, really fast. So fast, like my father always told me uh, that uh, getting it in is really easy and fast. It's the problem is getting it out on time. And, and now I understand what he means. So getting it easy in is very easy. Hand tighten, like hand tighten them. And then finally, uh, tighten them but don't need too strong because it's all aluminum there's not a lot of uh, vibrations over here okay I got all six bolts in like I said it's it's not difficult it's just it takes time because it's you get a less an eighth of a turn every every spin every time you pick up the tool very tight spot over here I got it in now what I'm gonna do is I run the hose from here run it through this area into here and then put a the filter at the end all over here over the starter in here into this cavity and this is where i'm going to put the filter it doesn't really matter where you put it as long as it's not mo touching moving parts you can cut it over here and put the filter on this it's gonna be located over here and it's gonna be behind the cover now let's close things up let's connect the O2 sensor and connect the hose on the other side close the side panels and wrap it up So mission complete, let me show you what it looks like. Can you see? Looks nice and nice and nice. The Trask breather, let me see if I can see anything 
from the other side any better visibility. Maybe, maybe a little bit. All buttoned down, tightened, breather working. So hopefully solved uh, one of uh, Milwaukee 8's big problems, the crankcase pressure. Hope this was somewhat of an educational video for you and you learned something from, from it. That's it. I'm Sandy. You're watching Holy Shift till the next video. Oh, take a look what we got there. Stay tuned for uh, really exciting videos about that. I'm Sandy watching Holy Shift till the next video. Peace out. I'm hurrying. Gotta get to, to I have a flight literally in three hours. Bye.